I'm AJ and thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you're not a current subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that like button because you're going to like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. So in my previous video, I talked about the Amazon Credit Builder card and I did a review of that card and talked about a little bit about what secure credit cards are. So in this video, I decided to talk about how to build credit and also how to rebuild your credit. So before I get into that, let's just first talk about the two main types of credit. You have revolving credit and you also have installment credit. So with revolving credit, it's basically an open-ended, uh, no time limit credit usage. So we use the example of a credit card, which is a revolving uh, credit option. They give you a certain limit. Let's say it's a thousand dollars or it's ten thousand dollars. No matter what that limit is, there's no specific time limit on when you need to pay off a specific balance. So if you charge five hundred dollars on your thousand dollar card and you pay it off, you can continuously do that for the rest of your life, as long as you keep up with the payments and as long as that bank doesn't go out of business. So as I mentioned, a credit card is one example of revolving credit. You can also think of a, a HELOC, which is a home equity line of credit. So anytime you hear the word line of credit, that's a revolving credit. So it's a form of credit that you can use over and over again, as long as you make whatever the minimum payment is for that card based on the balance that you owe on that revolving credit line. The second type of credit that we're going to talk about is installment credit. So you can think of installment credit as you have a fixed timeline and a fixed amount of dollars that you're being allowed to borrow and you have to make those specific payments every month. And then at a certain period of time, whether it's a year, two years or five years, you are expected to pay off that loan. Now, this loan doesn't have to take the whole time period. You can actually pay it off early. Uh, with mo most of those types of credit, there is no penalty for paying it early. And depending on the type of loan or credit that you receive, there may not be a benefit as well. So you have to determine, is it a fixed interest rate to where you're already being charged that interest upfront, or if the interest is gonna be charged over time. And so that paying that line of credit off early would actually save you money over the long term. So typical types of installment loans are loans for cars, uh, mortgage loans, or any personal loan where you don't have a revolving ability to keep charging on that line of credit. So since this video is about building your credit and these same rules can apply if you're trying to repair your credit, what we're gonna talk about first is what's probably the easiest type of credit to receive, which is a credit card. And now if you, if you have bad credit or if you don't have any credit history, then you may have to start off with getting a secured credit card. Now, for a secured credit card, what you're basically doing is you're gonna give a certain amount of dollars based on the limit that they allow for you. So let's say the credit card company is gonna give you a thousand dollar credit limit, but because you have no credit history, they don't wanna give you an unsecured credit limit to where there's no collateral for that company they don't have a history to show that, you know, you're going to make your payments on time. So they're going to tell you, OK, you have to put down a deposit of a thousand dollars and we'll give you a thousand dollar credit limit. You can basically think of it like a savings account where you put that thousand dollars into this credit card company. They give you a credit card limit of a thousand dollars and then you can continuously use that over time. And so the money that you're actually putting as that down as the deposit, you don't actually use that. So you still have to come up with the payments every month based on what you spend on that card. So, of course, if you can get an unsecured card, by all means, that would be the best route to go. So that way, the thousand dollars or however much your credit limit is, you can actually keep that money to yourself and put it in a savings account where you earn interest or put it into the stock market where it can get compound over time. But chances are, if you have absolutely no credit history or if you're rebuilding your credit because you had bad credit in the past, then a secured credit card would probably be the easiest route for you to build up your credit. Now, another route, which would be even easier, but this is also built on trust, is for someone to add you onto their credit card that they already have as an authorized user. So when you add someone as an authorized user, you're basically sharing that credit limit. So let's say your mom or dad, or maybe you have another family member that's willing to add you onto their credit card. You are now both responsible for that credit limit. So if 
let's say it's your mom that added you to the card. If she doesn't pay the card, that's just like you not paying the card because now this is linked to your credit history. Now it's easier because you don't have to apply for it. The person that already has the card, they can just add you as a user. And there's, for most companies, there's no pull of the credit to make sure that this person is credit worthy or not. Some credit card companies may require that and maybe they may deny you or they may put a smaller limit on that credit card because they now have someone attached to it that they don't have the trust or the history of payments that they can give such a large limit. And I can attest to that. My actual first credit card, I was added on as an authorized user to my mom's credit card. And so instead of going out and applying for a card myself, I was quickly able to get onto a credit card and use that as I was going to college to buy my first computer. Now, as I mentioned, there could be a downside to this. You know, if they don't pay it, that will then affect your credit history. If you're charging stuff and then you don't make those payments, you can affect that person's credit as well. So of course you want to get on a card of someone that you can trust and they also have to trust you because they're going to be adding you to their card and thus being connected. Your credit score is being connected to some degree. Now it's not a one-to-one. -one. So if that person has five other cards, they have mortgage loans and all types of other loans, you know, it won't drag their credit down if something were to happen and you were to not do your part in taking care of that credit card. But chances are they probably will take you off that card if you're not doing what you're supposed to do. So you definitely want to make sure that you're paying your part and also that the person that you're joining, that they're doing their part to take care of that credit card. Now, the other option would be to get an installment credit. Now, getting an installment credit may be a little bit harder if you don't have any credit history at all. So I'll use an example of a credit union that I actually used to where you could get a secured loan, whereas, you know, you have money in your savings account they basically create a loan for you, but you're depositing your funds as the actual collateral for that loan. And now you have a loan on your credit report that they are now reporting to show that you are a trustworthy user of credit. So of course, at the very least, you're going to pay the minimum to make sure you keep that payment going for at least six to 12 months. That way you're building up your credit. And with this personal loan, personal loans are typically, the interest rates are typically lower than a credit card. Credit cards can range from anywhere between 14% or even up to 30% interest rate. Whereas most personal loans, they're usually below 20%. You can maybe even get one for as low as 2% or 5%. So as a person who's starting to build their credit or trying to rebuild their credit, secured credit cards and secured loans may be the best option for you if a bank or a credit card company isn't willing to provide you with an unsecured loan or an unsecured credit card. So now that you've been approved for your secured credit card or your secured loan or your unsecured credit card or unsecured loan, you, there are a few things that you want to focus on to get your credit score in the right place. So I'm not going to get into all of the factors of a credit score because there are many that you have to think about, but there are a few high impact areas that you should focus on to make sure that you build your credit and you or rebuild your credit the right way. So one of the main high impact areas of your credit score is your payment history. Now, credit card companies and whoever is maybe willing to give you a loan in the future, what they're gonna look at is the history of the payments that you made. Did you make payments on time? The fact of whether you pay the minimum or you pay more, that isn't as relevant as the fact of you being consistent in making payments over a long period of time. And with most secured credit cards, if you make payments for six months or more without missing any payments, Typically, they'll give you the deposit back that you made when you created that first secured credit card. And like I mentioned in the Amazon video, uh, their specific company, you have to make payments for at least seven months and then they'll automatically give you that deposit back. It could take longer depending on any other factors within your credit, but the minimum is seven months with Amazon. And I've seen that most companies are six months or more and then you can either you know, change to an unsecured card or they'll up your credit limit and we'll get into that next. So the second biggest factor is your credit utilization. So that means how much of your credit limit you're actually using compared to what your credit limit is. So if you have a limit of $1,000 and you keep a $500 balance, that means your credit utilization is at 50%. Typically you wanna keep it below 30% or even better below 10% or even better, just pay it off every month. Because if you're paying it off every month, 
That means the credit card company is not charging you any interest and you're saving money. In order to make sure that you have a high credit score, you wanna at least keep it under a 10% utilization rate to make sure that you keep your credit score up. And now if you're starting off with that secured credit card, after six months, you can actually request to make a credit limit increase and you can actually do that every six months. And when you do that, you can either just request an increase without making a specific amount of money that you want your limit to go to. And usually they don't do a hard pull on your credit card, which would help to lower your credit score. But if you do need a specific amount, you can request that. And But they will have to do a hard pull, which will have a larger impact on your credit score than just a soft pull if just for requesting a credit increase. Now the importance of asking for that credit increase, I'll give the example of, again, if you have a thousand dollar limit and you have a $500 balance, that's a 50% utilization rate. Now, if you were to increase your limit to $2,000 and you have that same $500 balance, now that's only a 25% utilization rate. So the higher your credit limit, the higher amounts of money that you can have and, and still have a low utilization rate. Now, the third high impact area would be derogatory marks. And so that those are things like uh, defaulting on a loan. If you've had a bankruptcy in the past, these are typically things that if you don't have any credit, those aren't things you have to worry about. Those things can only be created if you don't make your payments on time, if you go bankrupt. So you don't really have to worry about that section of the credit score. But those who are rebuilding their credit, those are people who have to worry about it because they've had bad credit in the past. They've had some negative remark on their credit. And so removing those derogatory marks are things that they need to focus on. And so I'll make a video in the future to talk about how to remove those marks. Uh, today, we're just gonna talk about getting started with building your credit. Now, the next area is a medium impact area. And this is the last area that we're gonna talk about as far as building your credit. And we won't go too much into this because the main factor for this is the age of your credit. So the amount of years or months that you've had your credit card, this isn't something that you can change and make a difference in one day because it's over time. It's the amount of years. And typically to have a high score in this specific area, it takes about eight to 10 years to get to what the highest point for that specific section of your credit score. So if you're new, this is your first card or your first loan, the main thing you wanna remember is keep making those payments on time and do it over a long period of time. And this will take care of itself. So in this video, we talked about two of the different types of credit that you can have revolving in installment credit, as well as the high impact factors that affect your credit score. So if you're just getting started on your credit journey, uh, you may not be able to get that unsecured credit card. So you wanna apply for either secured credit card or secured loan so that you can get started with your own savings as the collateral for your credit line. And then make sure you focus on those high impact areas, which are to make sure you're paying on time, increasing your credit limit over time, and making sure you're keeping your credit utilization very low because that is a high impact area of your credit score. All right, thanks guys for watching this video. You could have been doing anything with your day, but you decided to watch this video and I really appreciate it. If you're not a current subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that like button because you really like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Again, thanks for watching. You guys have a great day.